Hello everybody, I got nothing to disclose except for my awesome title slide which you see here. This should get you all warmed up for what's about to come, but first I should disappoint you, I'm going to start with another random technique. Oh look, it's my good old friend TDI, so try, let's try to explain this thing. There's a diffusion weighted data set, or rather a colored FA map, and then as Donald already said, we can do CSD. It looks like this. And if I interpolate the background, you can appreciate the quality of the FODs a bit more. And then we do tractography, pretty nice. Now comes the TDI trick. We just overlay a grid again, like this. And then we count the number of tracks in each voxel, and then map it again. Now we get this. Um, we can also color it according to the local direction of the tracts, and you get a color map again. At this point, I should uh, confess that this was a special tractography. What you just saw was a short tracks tractography. What's the difference with normal tracks? Well, the minimum track length is actually the same, so it's, it's just as hard for a normal as a short track to get into the distribution. The maximum track length, however, is different. In a regular tractogram, there is none, or a very large one. Uh, in a short tracks, it's quite limited. Um, and to compensate for that, because we get shorter tracks, we generate lots more. What is the effect of this? Well, basically, the TDI map, the short tracks one, is going to look much more homogeneous. Why can this be helpful? Well, for instance, if you look at directional information, then you can appreciate that because of the reduced dynamic contrast of the short tracks tractogram, we are focusing more on the directionality of the information. And because what I'm about to tell is all about directionality, we'll basically use these parameters. So from now on, we'll always be working with the short track tractogram. Okay, let me introduce you to my other friend, the plan, because it's getting quite confusing. We started with some DWI data. We showed the deck FA map. We showed the FODs on top of them. I told you that we can use those for targeted or just in general tractography, which meant that we could generate a large short tracks tractogram because our aim was to come up with the TDI or the deck TDI map. That's all fine, and you can see some, well, repeating structure in there. That's because now my true friend is going to appear. It's the TOD filling in the gap. Okay, what is the TOD then? The TOD is what I call the track orientation distribution. It's a generalization of the TDI map to the full five-dimensional spatio-angular, well, space. Pretty impressive, so it seems. How does it work? Well, actually, very simple. Here's your average track segment, which I'm going to represent by kernel. And for the nerds among us, this is an appledized as a delta function up to order 16, which I think is really great. And then we can use this to map a full track. How are we going to do this? Well, basically, we'll integrate this kernel along the track in a continuous manner. And then, for instance, for this example, we'll get this. And you see that the curvature is also nicely represented in there. For a full distribution of tracks, we just add the contributions. And for this simple example, in this case, you'll get this. OK, let's then do this to our data. Here's the colored FA map, and let's complement it like this. Looks pretty nice. Interpolate the background again so you can appreciate the TODs. And what you can see is that if you still remember the FODs, there's a bit more regularization in here. And it's no longer FODs, it's TODs, very important. It's something else. Um, but apart from that, it still has lobes in the directions of tracks. So, well, that got me thinking, and then I thought, and here comes the real surprise, why not, not use these TODs again for tractography? And not only that, and the next thing is really going to blow your brain out, bang, you can just repeat it again and again and again, but the slide is limited, so I'll stop at the end there. And while the smoke is setting over the last explosion, well, we see there's a lot of TODs, there's a lot of tractograms, it gets all confusing, and some, well, laser ninja jumps in and makes a bit of structure in there, adds some levels, and now we can name everything in a unique manner. So now I have the FOD, which for organizational reasons is at level zero. There's a TOD at level one, there's a TOD at level 2, and you can just keep going off the screen over there. Okay, let's try this to some data. We have our average single healthy human subject, put them in a scanner, Siemens 3 Tesla, TRSE sequence. 
uh, normal voxel size, 2.5 millimeters isotropic. We acquired 10 non-diffusion weighted imaging vol volumes, which we average. And then we acquired three different shells. And as you can see, each next shell has a lower B value, so less angular contrast, if you will, and also less directions, so also less angular resolution. Why did we generate three shells? Well, we're going to regard these as three separate data sets and perform CSD or super CSD if necessary, up to order eight, and then we'll get high quality FODs, medium quality FODs, and maybe low quality FODs. Okay, here's the plan again. We're going to show some results for this, which we can indicate on this plan. First, we're going to show what it looks like for the different FOD and TODs. And underlying will always show an FA map or a TDI map. Here are some results. This is for the high quality FOD data set, as you can see over here, it's the high quality one. And as you can see, well, the FODs are pretty good, of course, it's perfectly suited for CSD, these parameters. But you see, the TODs show still a bit more consistency. And between level one and two, you cannot notice much difference. So it seems level zero to level one has done most of the job, level one to level two, well, not that different. You can also then here see a new level to TDI map, so this is what you already knew, and this is well, officially now a TDI level 2 map. Okay, this is for the medium data. Now it gets interesting, of course, because I didn't apply Donald's earlier presented techniques. They do look a bit horrible, but if I apply now the TOD to this, you can see, well, well, here the directions were not all that consistent. Here they are much more consistent. And even in a true, truly complex system like the brain, you can also still see some improvement from level one to level two. Like for instance here, the peaks were still pretty small. Here they are much larger, and we are able to to recover this crossing in only a medium quality data set. Now it gets really, really, really interesting because this is the bad, bad, bad quality. Truly scrambled up. So long story short, in the end, we still recover the crossing. You cannot clearly see it here, but there's also a third direction running perpendicular to this one. Okay, finally, we show the tracking results, uh, targeted tractography. We're going to show a single experiment here, seeded from the Corpus Callosum over there, 10,000 targeted tracks. We're going to do probabilistic tractography with FOD or the TOD as a full distribution. And just as a bonus, I added the deterministic tractography also based on the FOD and the TOD as you saw them before. These are the results for the high quality data set. So here's probabilistic, here's deterministic. I'd always advise to use this one because this one looks plain ugly. But then again, you can see that from level zero to level one to level two, we get nice improvements, even for the high quality data set. You see, here are some false positives. They will slowly disappear a bit. Not all of them, but some of them do. Then for the worst quality, well, it just helps more. You can see that in the end we get a nice result, while here we got a pretty scrambled up result. And then for the well, worst quality data, you see that in the end we still are missing some structure which we had before, so it cannot recover everything. But then again, comparing this one to this one, I'd rather prefer this one. Okay, in conclusion, the probabilistic short tracks TOD, because that's the one that I used here, shows great angular structure, contrast and coherence in continuous structures like bundles in the brain. And by consequence, it's, no wonder, uh, it's not a surprise that it serves as a robust basis for TOD-based fiber tractography, especially in the more challenging situations, like, for instance, lower data quality. Then some food for thought during the food later this evening. The probabilistic short text TOD again incorporates somehow long distance continuity constraints of the preceding short tracks tractography. And by that you could reason that it encodes some inherent information on the support of directions by the continuous surroundings. So not directly surroundings, but also further away. That means that it can guide the track, and this is really cool, I think, if you think about it, to where it is more, or even most likely, to find more continuous structure over a larger distance. So you're guiding the track in the right direction because you know that further away there's still going to be some structure and it's not going to run into nothing. Or long story short, you could also say the short tracks did the field work, the final tracks profit. I thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot.